Uh, all already from uh, USA. He will be speaking on uh, global solid solidarity movement, bipod, divestments, and uh, sanctions. Paul, उनकी तबीयत काफी खराब थी, लेकिन जो Palestinian cause है उससे उनका इतना गहरा जुड़ाव है कि अभी आएंगे उनका लाठी के सहारे भी वो चल के आ रहे हैं तबीयत खराब है और अभी उनके घर में भी एक छोटा सा हादसा भी हुआ है लेकिन इसके बावजूद और एक एक्टिविस्ट की लाइफ में ये सारी चीजें रहती हैं लेकिन जो जस्टिस के मोमेंट्स हमारी सोसाइटी में चल रहे हैं दुनिया भर में चल रहे हैं उसमें हम लोग साथ होते हैं और जो पेलेस्टाइन का जो दर्द है जो अभी कुछ देर पहले आपने यूट्यूब में बेकिंग में देखा था इस सेशन के तो उसके साथ एक उसके साथ अपना जो जुड़ाव है उस वजह से पॉल अपनी तबीयत खराब होने के बावजूद भी हमारे बीच में यहाँ मौजूद है तो इसलिए पॉल जब यहाँ पर आए तो उनका हम जोरदार तालीम के साथ स्वागत करेंगे तो नाउ of millions of people that are the oppressors. 
This is one reason why, although we should be in solidarity with everyone, and with, with Egyptians, with Tunisians, with Indians, with, with everyone, in the case of Palestine, it's, it needs more. It, it is the situation like in South Africa, or similar, where uh, the action of the world is necessary to, to end this. It needs our participation. It cries for our participation. And I want to ask you, will you help to end the occupation of Palestine? Yes. Will you end it? Yes. What are we going to end? What will we end? Where will we end the occupation? Where? In Palestine. We will end the occupation in Palestine. The participation of foreigners, of outsiders, in the, um, in the resistance movement in Palestine, as uh, Dr. Mazen Kupsi has said earlier, uh, gained a big uh, importance starting in about roughly 10 years ago. This is when uh, Israel occupied, reoccupied, if you will, invaded the, the West Bank uh, in most of the cities and started to dis destroy in a way that it didn't before. And this was the time when the International Solidarity Movement, which started in, in 2001 um, and grew in 2002, uh, started to attract thousands of people from outside Palestine to come and participate with Palestinians. And it had some interesting success because of the racism in Israel. The Israelis, uh, for Israelis, many times the, they treat the Palestinians uh, as if they are not human. So we introduced some people that they think are human, who are the foreigners from outside. And then later, of course, some of the Israelis themselves came to participate. When, uh, when my colleague, uh, Rachel Corey, was killed, we had some discussions before that. We knew when, uh, when the, uh, the church, in, in Bethlehem was when some of my colleagues went there. I was there and we discussed uh, afterwards. We said, sooner or later, one of us is going to die. And what, that person was Rachel Corey. So the respect for Westerners went down. And the respect for, even for Israeli, Israelis, started to, to go down. So, it's temporary and it's it's artificial it's based on racism as if someone's life is more valuable than someone else's life it's not true we all uh, have the same value uh, but at the same time we are all brothers and sisters and so we have to work together and in order to build a, a worldwide movement I have to uh, first of all, you're familiar with the ISM, which attracted many, and many others uh, like the ISM began to go to Palestine to participate with Palestinians. But there's a problem. Suppose, uh, in, in order to participate with Palestinians, you have to get into Palestine. And if you begin to behave in a way of resistance, you can't get into Palestine anymore. This is my situation. I can't go there. It's forbidden. And I'm one of hundreds or maybe thousands of non-Palestinians who can't go to Palestine. So if you can go to Palestine and participate in the, in the resistance uh, with Basel and Said and uh, uh, all the others, that's great. If not, we have to find another way. And Mazen spoke about the other way. The other way is for, for us 
to cr uh, create 7,000, as, as Mazen said, uh, to, to march into Jerusalem because they can't stop us. Well, if 7,000, why not 70,000 or 700,000? This is, this is what we're hoping to do. It is the collective effort of large numbers of people behaving in a certain way and, and strategically that we can overcome this. I mean, you know the, I think all of you have probably studied the, uh, the principles of nonviolent resistance and the, the strategy behind it. And uh, I, the, the international solidarity movement was one way to do this. Uh, another way, when actually at the time when I was sent home, where it was forbidden for me to enter uh, uh, to Palestine anymore, I met, afterwards I met with some of my colleagues and we started thinking, what can we do to challenge the Israeli occupation? And we thought about boats to Gaza. So, indeed, it was a crazy idea. Nobody believed it could be done. But in the end, we did it. We had a few boats that actually went to Gaza. Okay, in the end, of course, they were able to stop us and to stop us in a very nasty way. As you know, nine, nine people lost their lives and many of us were, were hurt as well. But the challenge rang a bell and people started to come from all over the world and they entered Gaza by land the land convoys, and Gaza was uh, awakened the conscience of the world. In the United States now, you will see demonstrations, you will, uh, and, and things do not go unanswered. Recently, we put billboards, stop sending money to Israel. We, we collected money and we put these billboards on the sides of buses. We bought the space. We put it on, on, uh, uh, on the sides of buildings and highways. We put it inside the public uh, transportation systems in the San Francisco area. And we're continuing to do this. Okay? We're not sitting still. And this is done, being done in some ways in the UK and other places. As Mazen said, the government will be the last to come. We didn't even get the press. To, to tell the story of Palestine very much in the United States. It's the Zionist voice that is in the press in the United States. So it's the Zionist voice that's also in our government. Okay, we'll change that, but it takes time. I was very um, excited when two years ago, Someone introduced me to my colleague, Feroz Letiborola, uh, who had also a crazy idea uh, to, to have a global march to Jerusalem, that a million of us would march into Jerusalem and in a nonviolent way, in the Gandhian way. Well, we started and we got um, with all the demonstrations around the world, between 300 and 600,000 participated. And on the borders of uh, Palestine, we got um, roughly 100,000. And inside Palestine, thousands more participated. It's a start, and we haven't given up the idea. It's a very powerful idea, and it can be realized in different ways. One is to march into Jerusalem if we can. And we can, but it requires a great deal from all of us. I'm ready, if you're ready to go uh, in about an hour, let me get a drink of water, and, uh, uh, and I'll, we, can all, we can all march to Jerusalem this afternoon. Okay. I'm ready. I don't need my cane anymore. Um, but, uh, but really, it is possible. 
and the Arab Spring showed how, how much it's possible. The, uh, the fact is that when we are united, when we are united, we cannot be stopped. We cannot be stopped. So, what is the strategy of the Zionists? What is the strategy of those who want to stop us? What is it? Divide us. Yes. Break us. And unfortunately, they are succeeding in many ways. We are divided by religion, by politics, by, uh, by so many things. And it's a big mistake because we're united on Palestine. Let Palestine unite us. We don't disagree on Palestine. Look at all the, all the people who are here today from different movements and different countries and different religions. We can be united. We can make this end. We can do it today. Listen, patience is a virtue and the Palestinians have exhibited fantastic patience. But impatience is a virtue also. We should be impatient. We, have, we should make it stop now. And we have the power to do it. Nobody can stop us if we are united. This is what changed South Africa. This is what, uh, um, it, and where did we get it? We got it from India. India, the, the, the movement in India was powerful in liberating India. The movement in South, world, uh, world solidarity in South Africa helped to liberate South Africa. Now we have a chance, but we have to work together. One of the most powerful movements that is happening, which worked with South Africa, is BDS. Boycott, divestment, sanctions. Let Israel be isolated. Let them be alone. Let the United States be uh, and Israel both be alone. And eventually, the, it, the pressure will be enough to change it. We can do it. We have the power. So we have to, we have to exercise this by challenging through, uh, I'll, I'll tell you right now, we're looking at, I don't know if it's going to happen, but we are looking at breaking the siege of Gaza by air. Okay? I can't tell you very much about it, but we're looking at the possibility. Uh, I, we're, it's, it's a bit early to tell you, but I'm, uh, I, I think I'm excited about it, so I have to tell you. Uh, and that's all I can tell you, unfortunately. We have to find imaginative ways, creative ways, uh, to challenge uh, injustice. Martin Luther King, uh, said, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. And this is why all of us, if you are in Hyderabad or Kerala or uh, in Japan or in Australia or in Latin America or in the United States or in Palestine, we all have to fight injustice everywhere. Uh, looking at the films this morning, did you see injustice? Yes, there's injustice there. So it's our responsibility to get rid of this injustice or we will suffer injustice. So are you with me? Okay, so let's liberate Palestine. Okay?